Schmidt? Here. Mr. Lind? Here. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Welfer? Yes. All right. Can we motion to approve the agenda. Second. Motion has been made with the proper second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We have an agenda. Uh, Mr. Wilson, would you please take the stand? Hi, Mike Wilson, Airport Director. Um, I tried bringing this to Council a couple weeks ago and it was pulled from the agenda just for a little more discussion on it. Um, the reason that I brought this ordinance to the Council is currently the way that the 5-2-6 um, regarding discharging weapons is written. Uh, we are not allowed to control any of the wildlife lethally at the airport. Uh, we do, we have a wildlife hazard management plan out there. Uh, we have to mix lethal and non-lethal means to get the wildlife to actually leave the airport. Um, we always do the non-lethal first, but we do reinforce it with lethal. And without having the ability in the ordinance to do that, uh, it's hard to keep wildlife away from the airport. So I, I added in there, um, I changed the wording a little bit after the last council meeting um, to try to narrow it down just for airport employees because it seemed that may have been part of the issue. Um, so I put the language as four airport employees of the city acting in the scope of their employment are allowed to shoot fire or discharge firearms. And then on the um, A3, for no shotgun slugs shall be discharged within the city except by airport employees of the city acting in the scope of their employment. Uh, we do get deer on the airport. We try to chase them off the airport, but if we're not able to chase them off, um, a lot of times they'll end up injuring themselves so badly that we have to take lethally take them um, and avoid them running out onto, an air, onto a runway and having a collision with an aircraft. Mr. Mayor. It's Mr. Councilor. Mike, you might explain to the council what you were telling us at the board meeting today about uh, federal and state um, permits to kind of hunt outside season because I know there's a question about yeah. how can you shoot geese it's not geese season. Yeah. Um, as part of our wildlife hazard management plan this is part of the plan here we take daily records of what we see out on the airport for wildlife um, what we do with the wildlife if we hunk our horn at it or we have bird bangers that go up and make a loud noise um, we have some propane cannons that, that we shoot that make loud noises to scare them off. Um, but we also have depredation permits with the state and with the feds. And those allow us um, to take, with the federal permit, we can, throughout the year, take 25 Canada geese, 10 mallards, 25 ring-billed gulls, 25 herring gulls, five red-tailed hawks, five American kestrels, and five turkey vultures. Um, I don't think we would ever get to those numbers but that's what they provide us just based on on the past history of what they've seen on the airport uh, every year we go through the USDA Wildlife Services they issue us a it's called a form 37 um, details what animals they've seen what ones we've had issues with they give that to the to me and then I turn that in with the federal permit process and they issue based on those recommendations of that wildlife biologist uh, with the state we also have a deer permit um, to take up to five deer on the premises. And we go through, all the airport personnel go through eight hours of training annually on wildlife hazards. Um, that's anywhere from habitat management to scare tactics, um, lethally taking the wildlife. Uh, they go out and they shoot the bird bangers and screamers and I guess explain where to shoot, how to shoot safely on the airport so that we're not endangering anybody. <coughs> Mr. Hart, any? Do you, uh, are your employees, are they certified or trained on firearms or discharge of firearms or anything? Is that part of the program or not necessarily? There's a little bit in that course. Um, what I've done at airports in the past is we would bring out someone from the police department just to go over basic firearm safety with us. And then they would tour the airport and look for sort of hot spots, I guess. Uh, it's pretty open around our airport. We have a lot of stuff on the south side and then there are some houses that we would have to definitely be aware of around the perimeter too. Thank you. I have a question. So the the guns will be housed on there or they'll be with the person that is that carries or where we will they have, be stored? We have those at the airport. They're locked up. Okay. Um, okay. They've had it, all the weapons and everything and the means to do this. Just never have, I guess. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Council, any other questions? Yeah, Mr. Wilson. Is 
Uh, I'm just wondering if uh, th this language is too broad, if it should be um, narrower than just refer to if, I mean, all that you're wanting this language uh, amended uh, is for the wildlife control, is that correct? Or is there, are there other things that you want this language in there for? No, it's wildlife control. Would you, would you want to have this narrowed just to say for wildlife control purposes? Are you looking at the one with the red that I just yes. added out? Okay. Yeah. Um, I guess in the scope of their employment, that's the wildlife duties to me, so I, I didn't narrow it any further. I could for wildlife control. I, I mean, because I, I, I see where this, I, I mean, if you wanted to expand it into other uses for uh, firearms at the airport, but if this specifically is for wildlife control, uh, I would see that we have a, just a phrase in this for wildlife control. Maybe you could add, Mike, to something as needed to control airport one. Yeah. yeah. Or, or something like that. And council, this is just for information today. We will have this on the agenda next week for a vote. So all all this is, is informational, but that's a good point. That yeah, if you just added that those few words, possibly that's more the anxiety of some folks. Okay. And then I guess I would just reiterate here. Um, there, this is not just going out hunting. This is very limited. It's it's a backup to the the non-lethal control. Um, a lot of times the propane cannons they'll. They make loud noises, they'll bang every five minutes. And if the birds know that it's just going to make a loud noise, and they'll fly up, and then there's a lot of videos online, they'll fly up, it'll stop, they'll fly back down and land again. Um, so they, they teach us to try to mix the two. And there's a lot of provisions on the federal permits. There's no hunting from blinds, there's no calling in birds or anything like that. Um, it's strictly you see them out there, you try to chase them away, get them off the airport. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions? Motion All right, thank you, Mike. Motion, motion's been made with the proper second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, we are adjourned. Second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. We're here today for Director Trelka and Chief uh, Trelor to uh, discuss and inform the council as to uh, how they applied uh, their police and fire budgets this year. Dan, would you start us, please? Yeah, I'm going to kick it off here, Director of Safety Services, Dan Trelka. Uh, these decisions weren't taken lightly. We, in essence, were given a policy created by the city and we did the best we could with that citywide policy that was decided. Uh, without uh, maintaining the services and negatively impacting our services too much. Uh, there was a lot of discussion, a lot of debate among staff at the fire department, among staff at the police department, uh, and we made adjustments at both. And I won't call them minor adjustments, we made adjustments. In the budget process, we said we, we're good soldiers. You tell us what you want, in regard to the budget and we'll do the best we can with what you gave us and uh, that's what we did. At the uh, police department the mandate we came up with is we needed to maintain VCAT in some form, some fashion, some way because they have been so incredibly instrumental in addressing the crime issues and the violence in our community. Uh, the other mandate we had was uh, our number one priority at the police department is responding to calls for service. So we needed to do whatever we can to maintain these, those two priorities. VCAT did lose an officer, but VCAT as a unit is still being maintained. 
As a matter of fact, initially we, we were going to cut two officers from BCAT because they were the unit that was grant funded. We thought we could still maintain a uh, effective VCAT unit by losing two officers from it, but the VCAT sergeant and the second shift lieutenant came to us and said, it can't be done. If you're going to get rid of two, you might as well just get rid of the whole unit because we can't effectively function by losing two officers on VCAT. Uh, so we only cut it back to one. We made a couple of other minor adjustments. Uh, uh, Ward 10. Uh, in, es in essence failed to exist. Uh, we had a greater ability in the past to s assign an officer to Ward 10, which is Church Row. That still happens now, but on a very, very rare occasion. We had the ability, as I said, to do it in the past. Um, our rotational investigator, on occasion we would take uh, two officers out of patrol and on a rotational basis, 90 days, 60, 90 days, assign them to investigations. That's very effective, valuable, free training in essence for that patrol officer to get that training on search warrants and conducting thorough investigations. Uh, we lost the ability, or we adjusted our operations so that we wouldn't have the ability to do that as often. Uh, we have alternative shifts where officers will come in at uh, uh, different times to handle late calls for service. Uh, we lost, the, we, we adjusted there because we lost the ability to do that as frequently as we did in the past. So those are the adjustments we made at the police department. And you need to keep in mind that, uh, yes, it was three positions that were cut, uh, but that amplified a position we lost within the past year due to the loss of federal funding. So that's a fourth position added to those three. Uh, June 30th, we're going to lose a clerical position because of uh, grant funding is drying up. And these are things we expected for a couple of years and an anticipated it. Uh, what we didn't anticipate is the loss of the three officers. So in a two or three week amount uh, period of time, we had to make some adjustments and we did. I mean, we're, gonna, we're not denying anybody's service. Uh, we're doing the best we can with what we have. Uh, we've got a good thing going in Waterloo. In the past four years, crime's down 18%, use of force is down 23%. The theme we're going with now is we need to make it stick. We're still going to be able to make it stick, at least I hope so, because in Cedar Rapids, they're not doing as well. I think we're doing, and I hate to, to even mention them, or because I don't want to belittle them, but they're having some challenges down there, and they're very near to us, and they've already had 35 shootings and seven, seven homicides. Uh, knock on wood, we haven't had a homicide yet. So our theme now is to make it stick. We're trying to make it make stick. The good things have been happening in Waterloo. And uh, 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 we're, we're, we're proud managers. We're competent managers. And we're going to, uh, of integrity, I might add, and honor. And we're going to do the best we can with what we have. And I've got Captain Leibold and Captain Malis here to answer any specific questions you may have for the police department. And then, of course, uh, Chief Treeler is going to come up here and talk about the fire department because even though I'm involved in uh, helping in the management of the fire department, I have absolutely nothing to do with operations. Uh, but Chief Treeler is a competent, effective uh, manager of integrity, and I support him 110% in any decision that uh, he has to make. And some of these decisions are not easy, uh, but you've got some good public servants in this city, and we need to support them. Council, do you have any questions of Dan regarding uh, police, or would you like to hear from Chief Treloar, and then we'll have open it up for questions? Okay, well, Mr. Mayor, um, and because it's probably the same question for the fire. During the budget hearings, we were talking about not filling vacant positions, not cutting positions, not filling vacant positions. So I understood those positions were vacant, <coughs> and you're operating okay with those vacant positions. When we were in the uh, budget talks and the budget hearings, uh, we were down one position, uh, an officer that left due to an injury. Uh, <coughs> since then, to meet this policy that the city uh, established, we have, we have lost two more since then. So we've had to implement those, uh, the adjustments uh, to continue our effective operation to answer the calls for service and maintain VCAT. We've, uh, we've, we've made the adjustments now even though it's not July 1st because we are currently down three positions even though they were identified in the budget process as being uh, Officer uh, DeCoster, Captain Pillack, and uh, Lieutenant McNamee's positions that uh, uh, the bodies would ultimately come from. Uh, we've already had uh, three, we're at a point where we've got three vacancies, so the envelope's been pushed. We're in and, a situation And those now. are the three ones that were not filling. Correct. Okay. Mr. Schmidt. Mr. Schmidt. Um, Dan, when 
and again, mentioning uh, what Councilman Lynn was talking about, I thought during the budget hearings, police and fire, but let's just talk about police now, that there were a number of vacancies during the course of the year. Um, and, and those vacancies were left unfulfilled for a period of time. Um, is that accurate? Uh, well, the only vacancy at that time that we didn't fill was uh, DeCosters. Uh, and the reason that one was left vacant is we didn't know what was going to happen in the budget process. So it was agreed that it would be foolish to hire an officer and then lay them off if the city council took action to uh, start laying employees off. Um, and the discussions we had, but, you know, employee, employ, having employees is a very fluid dynamic. We never expected Officer Newman to uh, take a job in Minnesota. So when he did, and, and uh, we lost three positions in the budget, it, it, you know, I would lo have loved to have filled the position, uh, but it, uh, it's not sensible to fill the position if it's anticipated that we're going to lose two more anyway. Dan, would it, would it be maybe more easily understood if, and I'm sorry, Steve, for interrupting, but it seems like there's some confusion on, on vacant positions. How many police department, I mean, excuse me, how many police officers were authorized prior versus what's authorized now? In 2010, we were authorized for 125. And now? Last year, we dropped down to 124, and now we're authorized for 121. There you go. Yeah. Uh, Director Trolk, I just, I, I want you to um, uh, know that I understood full well that by approving that budget, which I voted against, meant that we were losing three police officers. And um, I wish we were still at 124. Um, and uh, I know what the VCAT and I know what the, those officers at 124 have meant for the Church Row area having lived there. Uh, for the last uh, 21 years in my home. And uh, I would hope that, that um, it, you know, with this reduction in staff, that uh, Joe or whoever would keep some stats on what that means to Church Row. That's all that I would ask of you. And we, uh, we're very good at that. As a matter of fact, I, although I don't like money numbers, I like numbers that we can utilize to show effectiveness. And uh, Captain Leibold, uh, keeps some tremendous net numbers along with our ITS person, Wendy, uh, uh, in Church Row, all the, all the areas of the city, so we can identify trends and address the trends appropriately. And Mr. Schmidt, I interrupted you, and my apologies, the floor is yours now if you have further questions. Okay. And I was going to say, you know, during, during the course of the budget hearings, I know Councilman Lind and Councilman Jones, unfortunately, he's not here, and I spent several hours uh, with Chief Financial Officer uh, Wiedner, and you know, there are a variety of different options that were presented, one including reducing five positions, both in fire and police. And we kind of talked about what impact would that have. And, you know, I, I understand it's obviously going to have an impact, but I also understand that, you know, the majority of the council decided that we couldn't continue to keep doing what we were doing from a, from a tax standpoint. So what could we do to be more innovative, to be more efficient, to be more... Uh, product and and I guess my uh, thought and I think the council members that voted in favor of that was that that three was someplace in between so that was a manageable number and you know two thoughts or two questions I guess I've got one I talked to a former reserve officer at an open house this weekend and he told me and this goes back I think 30 years but at one time he was part of our reserve group which I think now is it 12 to 15, somewhere in there. Yes, about that. And yes. we, we talk about that group every year, about what can we do to expand that. But he said 30 years ago, it was during uh, Leo Roof's uh, mayorship, that he said at that time they had 43 <coughs> reserve officers. So one question I would have is, what can we do to increase that number? Because to me, that would be a very logical help, maybe not a fix, but a very logical help to this situation. Well, even 15 years ago, uh, the requirements to be a certified officer and be a reserve in the state of Iowa were much, it was much easier than it is today. Uh, and the, equi the equipment requirements were much less. Uh, the equipment's very expensive for these uh, people to assume. And uh, what they are willing to do for us for free, uh, for five bucks a year, I think, is simply incredible. These people are putting their life on the line for five bucks. I I'm amazed. Uh, I think I should... Uh, I question their sanity, to be quite <laughs> honest with you. Uh, uh, so that's why we're having difficulty recruiting people to become reserves, because the commitment is tremendous. It's not like 
being a member of a club. It's like uh, having a part-time job that you don't get paid for. Literally, that's it, and risking your life for it. They help us out tremendously the way it is. Uh, the Fourth Street Cruise is a great example this past weekend. They were instrumental in, in uh, assisting us in that. And it was well attended. It was great to see all those people downtown. But as a matter of fact, we're starting another recruiting effort to try to get more reserves. Uh, but it's, it's greatly difficult because of the financial commitment and the, not, and the time commitment. Isn't there some movement to get some uh, donations to pay for that? Because what are they, $2,500, $3,500 a piece they spend in equipment? And they get a lot of donations to supply the equipment for Vest. I, they just got radios uh, and uh, helmets. I think they got donations for the helmets, uh, donations for the radios. So they do solicit many, many donations. But uh, It'd be great if we could even get more. Yeah, and, and if I could just uh, go ahead. Well, so I two other quick questions. Okay. One, uh, I know every year again at budget time we talk about the overtime and about how having these event groups, event sponsors, now that they all seem to be doing relatively well, having them participate because that seems to be where a lot of our budget challenges again is in the overtime. Are, have we got anything done on that yet, or is that still, I know you were working on it, is that still being worked on? I'm working on it. Uh, I plan on hitting it heavier in the fall and bringing it forward to the council for implementation starting in the next budget year. Okay. I joked with the captains just this weekend, I said, oh my goodness, we're becoming a tourist community because we have so many events. As a matter of fact, Captain Leibold is getting overwhelmed with events. They're good to see, but they take a lot of resources. So I'm working with Susie. I've established a committee with uh, uh, Jeff Kurtz and... Uh, uh, another individual whose name escapes me right now, but we're going to get together and, and uh, I'm going to bring an ordinance to you this fall uh, for review, discussion, and we'll tweak it from there and hopefully for passage next budget year. Mr. Murphy, I one more sure. question. I mean, I've never run a police department, but from a, you know, a basic business concept, it would seem to me, if I'm not mistaken, Church Row is probably the most challenged neighborhood in Waterloo from a crime standpoint. Wouldn't that be then logically the last place you'd remove an officer from rather than the first? Well, things have gotten better there. It is a challenge, but I would say at this point it's not our most challenging. I'd put it number four on the list. But that was also the newest ward we created. It was Ward 10. We'd had some success there, so it seemed to us that the, uh, the logical place uh, to make a minor adjustment was there. Uh, there are so many dynamics that are involved. It's a delicate uh, balance within the police department because uh, let, let's take Daisha for example. Uh, they have, there are three different squads uh, of about 12 officers. We need to even maintain balance on those squads because if we knock one squad down to 11 when there are 12 on the others, it's unfair when it comes to vacation sick and everything. It changes the uh, minimum staffing requirements and how many officers can get off. So we try to main these balances to provide the best service uh, we can. Like I said, we haven't, uh, in the past we were able to assign an officer, we had the ability to assign an officer more often than not to Ward 10. Now, on occasion, we still can do it, just not, it's less often. So do we have the same activity level during the three shifts? No. Okay. No, I mean, second I, shift is. I would have thought you would you'd staff up more for the shift that has the most activity, but you don't do that. Generally, we do. I mean, second sh second and third shift. Uh, second shift can have the most calls. Third shift won't have the most calls, but they'll have the most violence. So we have to take that into account. So second shift and third shift are basically the same. Uh, day shift tends to be uh, cold calls, or or they have more cold call cold calls than the other two shifts. So we don't run them with as many officers as second and third. But, but didn't you say you had 12 officers on each one of the three? That shifts? was an example. Oh, and I'm sorry. I misunderstood. And that's about 12 officers on each squad. Okay. And they work a 6-3 schedule. So when two squads are working, uh, the third squad is off. And then when you take into consideration injuries, sick, vacation, uh, family leave, I hate to state it publicly, but sometimes generally we have 10 officers working. We have 10 officers left to work. And if, uh, if, if officer number 10 gets injured or sick, then we got to uh, engage in recall. We have to, with overtime's created to cover that 10th position. Thank you. The 63 square miles is a lot of area to cover for 10 officers. Very quickly, I want to make one comment about the reserves, Dan, that you didn't, Dan, but that uh, you know, the reserves come in very handy for, for street crews, for my Friday Lou's, for the, uh, the vacationers, for those kind of things, but they don't and can't augment the 
street numbers for the police department. You can't count reserves in that 10 man or whatever uh, starting shift. They don't answer calls for service. So I mean that you have to kind of keep that in mind as we talk about how reserves are used. Uh, let's move to Chief Trelor, please. Well, I think Dan covered uh, a fair bit of uh, what went on at fire. We did have uh, two specific meetings, one April 3rd and one May 1st, regarding how we were going to run um, within our budget constraints uh, for next year. And that is the loss of uh, three personnel in addition to um, delaying hiring was also part of the budget. And uh, so we had a, a good heated debate at our first meeting. We tried to have three, uh, three ideas float to the top that might be doable for not only the department but for the citizens that we serve. And we know that in July we're going to be considerably short uh, due to long-term injuries. Um, we've got three out right now long-term. We've got another one going out shortly in conjunction with um, starting off the year uh, three positions not filled. So out of that first meeting, we came up with three ideas. One was browning out engine one, second was browning out engine six, and the third idea was taking down the aerial, taking 311 out of service, our only truck company in town, take that out of service. And part of that plan was also taking engine four out of service, depending on how short we got on a day. Because our minimum manpower right now is at 27. And there's going to be some days that we're going to be pushing downwards of 22 personnel unless we were to hire back fully. Our overtime budget won't allow us to do that. May 1st uh, meeting, um, we met again uh, specifically on the topic of how we're going to uh, come to a decision. And uh, there, there was good brisk discussion at that meeting as well. And, uh, and then we came up with the conclusion that we'd uh, brown out engine six. And that would be a sporadic brown out in July and August. And uh, we would reevaluate that at the end of August to see where we're at, <coughs> excuse me, overtime wise. And on that note, for the engine six browning out, and I took offense to the, to the uh, reference that uh, there might have been some political motivation made for browning out engine six. That's insulting to me and insulting to my staff. I think it was uh, a misplaced comment. Uh, and it came from council, and I'd like to see that uh, retracted if possible. Um, I'd also like to hear Mr. Schmidt how we're spreading fear in the community, because you quoted, you're quoted as saying that. That's offensive to me as well. But anyway, so Territory 6 for July and August will be sporadically browned out. So in essence, that station will close on the days we cannot afford to hire back enough personnel to man all six stations. And uh, I'd like Battalion Chief Freshwater just to speak real briefly to one of our meetings. Come on up, Art. Yeah, tell us what station six is. Hi, uh, Lieutenant Chief Freshwater. I've been with the fire department for 25 years. Um, one of our meetings, I struggled with the decision very, very hardly. Uh, Browning out Station 6 because I live there. I live a couple of blocks from him. I have family there. You know, I wasn't really for it, but the way we are laid out, I was here during the 90s when we had it closed permanently. Um, we are right now about the numbers where we had it closed permanently. So the point I want to make is our, our staff has done a good job keeping that station open since 97. We've combined uh, special duty apparatus into one apparatus doing both duties. Over the years, we've slowly combined trucks to keep all stations open. So I take offense to us spreading fear, which I think is ridiculous because why would I spread fear to my own family? And uh, that's all I got to say. Uh, over the years, Calls for service have changed throughout the city, and it's impossible for us to predict our next call. It's totally impossible. Sometime it might be in that, that district, sometime it might be in another. Engine 4, Engine 2 can respond to that territory without no railroad tracks in between. We have trouble with trains blocking stuff. 
logistically wise, that's the best part of the city that we can cover with other engines coming in. Uh, engine three, we got the 63 North project that totally locks them out. So road construction wise, during this time, it was the best decision we made. But we are not spreading fear. Thank you. Thanks, Marty. Uh, do you have more, Pat, or can I open it up? No, please open it up. Okay, Council, questions? Uh, Ms. Cole. I just have one question. Could you clarify what area Station 6 is? Generally, our territories are a mile and a half radius around the station. Okay. So. Um, and where is Station 6? At generally located at Ridgeway and Nainsboro. Um, for example, um, Audubon Park is outside of the mile and a half radius that is set for that station, but it's still in Territory 6's uh, first due territory. If that makes sense. Mr. Mayor? Mr. Lynn? Pat? Um, yes. Just so I'm clear, when you brown out, you brown out equipment. You take equipment out of service. You don't close the station. Well, in this case, we're browning out engine 306, which, which is a piece of apparatus, and that's the only engine that's at that station. Oh, I thought there was an ambulance there, too. There is an ambulance there, but it's not manned. It's an either-or type of operation. So two people either drive the truck or do the ambulance? No, it's all, all or nothing. So if we get, it's our fifth up ambulance in the city. So it's 336. If that got called out, all three from the engine would hop the ambulance, and then the engine would be out of service. So around town, at any given time, there are probably some stations that are quote, closed, right? Oh, well, there, there might not be manned because they're out on a call. Right. Um, station 3 is our fourth up ambulance, so they're an either or, and that's a three-man station. If 333 goes out, then the engine's out of service. Okay. That, and then that ambulance might be serving in Territory 4 to run a call because all three of our frontline ambulances are, are on calls. But it, it, it most of those stations that I see where there's a truck and an ambulance, they're not people there to run both of those pieces of equipment. Well, at Station 4, University in Ainsboro, that's a five-man station. Downtown, we've got, uh, uh, today we've got nine people on down there, I believe. And then Station 2 has an ambulance and an engine, and that's a five-man station. At the, at the first council uh, budget session meeting we had, I handed a packet. And, and it went through that, and station two is a five-man station. So if you drive by that station, you see a tr uh, fire truck and an ambulance, there'll be there are five personnel there for those two pieces of apparatus, two on the ambulance, three on the engine. I went by um, University in Ainsboro today just after that accident. Uh -huh. And the, the, fire, the station was closed. There's a fire truck in there. The ambulance was gone, but it was closed. I mean, there's nobody there. Did you I mean, I thought ring the doorbell? And, and well, I mean, I, I thought there was a fatal accident out front. I thought if they were open, they would have been out there. Um, but I'm just saying, from time to time, we close stations routinely, don't we? Well, but not because of lack of personnel. No. no, but I mean because they're out on a call or whatever. Sure, they, they may not be in their first due territory. They may be running a call, and so the station would have nobody there. Sure. I would not, me personally, I wouldn't classify that as being closed, but, well, but I, I get your point. The public, you know, the public thinks we're back in the 50s where every station has 100 people in them and there's a dog and <laughs> they're always open, you know what I mean? Right. No, there's, there's a very good chance that if you go up to a fire station ring the doorbell, there's going to be nobody there because they're on a call. Because you're efficiently running the operation. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Smith? Uh, Pat, during the budget hearing again, um, we talked about what would happen if you were reduced by five positions uh, and how that might work. And, and I understand during the course of the conversations there were a number of different options, but the option I heard at that meeting, and I think maybe the other three council members that voted for the budget, was I believe pulling the engine out of Station 1 and the Station 3 and Station 5 would it would be able to cover that area? That was one option given. Right. Definitely. That, that was one option given. Definitely. And I said it could happen right. that right. we okay. brown out engine one. Right. And and so I think 
I know that was part of the conversation that went on with some of the council members that that seems like an acceptable uh, option. And, you know, since then, the decision was made on the budget, things were uh, decided we're going forward. And then I believe where some of the comments that, that you refer to really came about after uh, we started seeing papers in the article about stations being closed, areas of town not having service, and anything that I said regarding this decision was comments I had put to me by citizens saying, gee, uh, that looked like a very political move when the one area of town that's affected is the area of town that four councilmen live in. I never said that. But I had people say that to me. And I had people ask, you know, are, aren't there <coughs> more efficient, more economical, more, uh, you know, better ways to do this? Because again, if, if we just keep doing what we've been doing, we're going to keep heading down the road of overspending our budget. And we made the decision, we can't do that. So we're going to have to figure out a new or better way to do things. And again, you know, one of the things we talked about is what some of the other communities are doing as far as volunteers. Uh, I understand that, that you would prefer not to have anything resembling a volunteer. Correct. And I understand that. But, but my question to you again is, well, you can't always get what you want. If, if you can choose between having three fully certified firefighters and two fully certified firefighters and a third person that is really not much more than a pair of hands to help. Wouldn't that be better than two certified firefighters, period, or brown, and browning out rather than shutting a station? I mean, what I think I was looking for, and most of the other council members, was to have a conversation uh, that, gee, if this is such a daunting challenge that we're giving to both you and the police, uh, then maybe we'd be better to have a discussion. But I'd rather have the discussion here than have it in the media. And that was the point of those comments, that why don't you come and talk to us about we're going we're gonna to close the station down? Because nobody ever came and told me that until I read about it in the Courier. And that's the problem. That's the problem? Well, that would be one of well, your problems as far as uh, whatever it is you're saying that I said. Well, you said that we're spreading fear. And now you're saying that your, your constituents called you and that's what they said? Well, give me their names and their numbers and I'll give them a call personally. You said that comment. You didn't say that you had people calling you and that's why you said it. Well, I just told you that. So that, that's where that conversation came Well, give came me those from. people's names and numbers and I'll personally call Mr. Smith. I'll, uh, I'll check with them and see if they'd like to have you call them. Obviously, if they wanted to have that public conversation with you, they'd probably show up here. But I, I think that, again, is the purpose of council members is to convey that information to you. And Pat, you know, it just seems like we had this reasonable conversation during the budget hearings and now all of a sudden uh, maybe things aren't as reasonable as they were. And again, I don't know why we didn't have that conversation here rather than having it in the media. That's, that's the point of my question. Well, Mr. Mayor. I can tell you, I can tell you straight up at those council sessions, those budget sessions, it's a little cat and mouse game. I don't think council's being fully upfront of what direction they really want to go after for cuts, and maybe they weren't uh, decided upon already. But from my standpoint, I was clear and concise, and I was consistent that cuts would result in browning out of engine companies. And we've got three stations that are one-man engine companies. So if I lacked uh, uh, being concise and direct to you, I suppose as a council, I'll apologize. But to me, I think I was upfront about it. You, you cut our personnel, you're going to reduce services, a city, a part of the city is going to be underserved, and that's what we're going to see. And that's what I said during the budget sessions. So I yeah. talked to Director Trauco about it, I informed the mayor, Mr. Jameson asked me for an interview. I gave him one. Uh, we have, we have another question on the floor, uh, Mr. Schmidt, if I could. Mr. Sure. Morrissey, please. Well, uh, Mr. May I, I don't know if we're going to revisit this, but uh, I mean, the council made a decision, yeah. and it, it uh, contrary to what one of uh, my uh, co-council people said, I, it wasn't a decisive decision. Four to three vote is not a decisive vote, um, and there were. 
um, plenty of uh, references by uh, Chief Trelaw regarding Browning out. Matter of fact, I brought along documentation in which he handed out talking about Browning out. So we, we knew that going in there. We knew what was going to happen. We knew we were going to lose six and probably six and a half because one was delayed in hiring public safety people. We knew that. We knew going into this uh, uh, budget uh, meeting that we had during the uh, council session back on March 3rd that we were supposed to vote on your budget first. But me being the newbie that I am, I did not know that it was inappropriate to introduce something and amend the agenda without a two-thirds vote. That was my fault, that I didn't stop that at that point in time so we could have had the proper vote. But these are all things that are over water, it's water over the dam. And uh, I respect uh, Chief Trelor, uh and Director Tralka for what they've done in trying to address the shortfall, I, to me, for four cents a day, we lost six people in public safety uh, over voting for the mayor's budget back on March 3rd. And I think, and I said at that time, and I'll repeat it, that that was a travesty, that that happened, and I hope that that never happens again. Public safety should be first and foremost, <coughs> and we lost it there for four cents a day. Okay, thank you, uh, Councilman Morsey. Unless there's burning comments from someone where over our, our time limit on this. Uh, uh, Marty, did you want to make a comment before you leave? That's fine. I just want to make a comment on the engine one. I, I, David, it's not open to the public if that's what you're coming up for. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Uh, from an operational standpoint, he was talking about uh, taking engine one out of service downtown. Uh, we have a lot more apparatus than just fire trucks and ambulances that we have to get to see. We have boats. We have special rescue trailers that come out of the core of the city. So you take that core of the city out and we have to take eliminate manpower from there, we have trouble getting all that stuff to the sea. Yeah. You know, special operations, we can't predict our next call. We don't know where it's going to be. We try to keep them in the core so they can expand to the riverways if we need boats or whatever, you know what I mean? Okay. Thanks, Marty. Uh, and, and just to clarify things for the for the public, this was a work session. It was a council information session meant for information for the council. It's not uh, open for public comments. And we're out of time, uh, Pat. Uh, you wrap up uh, quickly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just I, I think we're gonna we're still gonna serve the citizens the best we can. Absolutely. And uh, that territory uh, um, will be well served. Uh, there might be the odd uh, increased uh, response time out there, but. Uh, uh, we're going to make it work, and we hope that the number of days that that station's browned out is uh, kept to a minimum. And we're going to come in uh, within budget for this upcoming year. We'll be in the black. Thanks. Okay. Pat, I'll, I'll, I'll make. I'll make one comment. Pat, yes, sir. Just remember, we're on the same team. You guys are operations. We have to do policy. We both got tough jobs, but we're the same team. You bet, I, and I'm into it, and I'm into tough questions. I'm not into inappropriate comments. That's what I'm not into, and that's not directed towards you, just a few comments that have been made. Okay. Uh, I'm going to make one final closing because I get a chance to make a comment, and, and I think throughout the budget process, not only the last one, but everyone that I've been involved in, I've made the comment that we've cut to the point where we can't cut any further. If we reduce staff, we're going to reduce services, whether it's in police or fire or leisure services or the library, clerk's office, uh, wherever. If we reduce manpower, we're going to reduce services. And that is a fact of our life as it is today. I take a motion for agenda, so or for, for adjournment. Second. Uh, there's been a, a motion and a second to adjourn. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. We're adjourned. Thank you.
Mr. Welford? Here. Motion approved the agenda. You want to do the minutes too? And the minutes of April, or excuse me, of May 19, 2014. Second, we have a motion and a second. Have we discussion? I didn't believe so. All in favor, vote by the sign of aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Um, would you like me to take the travel request? That would be sure? really nice. Thank you. Okay. Uh, first one is Mark Bozen, Manager of Rehabilitation Services to uh, Destination Waterloo, Iowa, for an amount not to exceed $150. And Rick Gautney with Pillar Properties of Waterloo, Iowa, and requesting a refund in the amount of $450 for sewer charges billed for property located at 727 West Park Avenue that is still under construction. Number three is a motion to receive bids for the sale and removal of the fence located at 902 Logan Avenue, Dunsmore House, submitted by Susie Shares. Second, we have a motion and a second. Is there discussion? None. Seeing none, all in favor, vote with a sign of aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Um, would you like me to take the pre That'd be great. <laughs> okay. Uh, they come to us from Leisure Services, not to exceed $7,000 uh, for 150 tons of sand for the golf courses, uh, not to exceed $1,500 for TV commercials for June 2014, and $11,400 for electric scoreboards at Fields 1 and 2 at Percy Dane's Baseball Complex. And I'll second those. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there a discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, vote by the sign of aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. I move that we pay the bills this week, which are $14,862,674.66. point six six. This is our annual geo bond <laughs> principal payment <Wow. laughs> and also about a million dollars in construction. So I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Do we have discussion? Seeing you and all in favor, vote with a sign of aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion for adjournment. Second. All in favor? Aye. aye. We're adjourned. Thanks, ma'am.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this regularly scheduled uh, Tuesday, May 27th meeting of the Waterloo City Council. Uh, I'm, I have a, oh no, I'm going to call the roll first. Madam Clerk, please. Ms. Cole? Here. Mr. Jones? Mr. Schmidt? Here. Mr. Lynn? Here. Mr. Morrissey? Here. Mr. Welford? Here. Mr. Hart? Here. Thank you very much. If you would all join me, please, in standing for just a moment of silence or silent prayer, please. Thank you very much. Our Pledge of Allegiance tonight is going to be led by Mr. Eric Thorson, our city engineer. Eric, please. Would you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. For Christ's sake. <coughs> Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Hart. I will move that we approve an amendment agenda, and that amendment comes in number five on the regular council meeting portion and under hold hearings, and it is to read no objections on file. Also, with the approval of the amended agenda, I also move that we approve the minutes of May 19, 2014. Second. Council, do you have any questions or comments regarding the agenda or the minutes? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Very good. Those pass. I have a couple of comments before we get started. We don't have any proclamations or anything else, but uh, I want to make an announcement for all of you regular attendees that this should be our last city council meeting held here at the Art Center. Uh, we will be back in our old digs uh, starting next Monday, uh, June 2nd, uh, back in the city council chambers. It will not, though, be televised live yet. We still have about a week's worth of electronic works to do there to get it on television. So we'll be back next Monday in the old council chambers, or in the new council chambers, but it will still be tape delayed for one more week. So uh, that's for that. Uh, second, I just want to take just a second, a moment of personal privilege, please, to really uh, congratulate uh, the Waterloo Blackhawks. Uh, for those of you guys that go, uh, great, I'm glad you do. The, the, hopefully, the, the, many of you out there watching, to attend our Blackhawks games, but uh, what uh, a treasure we have in our sports teams in Waterloo, between the Waterloo Bucks and the universities and everything else, but the Waterloo Blackhawks are just an absolute treasure. And I just want to point out some of the accomplishments of the Waterloo Blackhawks this year. Uh, for those of you that don't know yet, and probably none of you do, Coach P.K. O'Hanley was just today named the United States Hockey League 2013-14 Coach of the Year. So we have a Coach of the Year here for P.K. Uh, on January 18th, with his 530th win, Coach O'Hanley became the winningest most coach in USHL history. The Blackhawks won their first Western Conference Championship this year, and along with it the Anderson Cup. The Blackhawks won their first Prairie Farms Cowbell Cup, which is a series between Cedar Rapids and Dubuque and Waterloo that we're very proud of. Uh, the Blackhawks had a franchise record 44 wins this year. Uh, they completed this year in the USHL playoffs for the eighth consecutive year. Uh, they reached the Clark Cup, Clark Cup Finals for the fifth time in the past 11 years. Cal Peterson was named to the or named the Dave Peterson Goaltender of the Year by USA Hockey. Uh, and, and Cal Peterson is a local fellow, for those of you who don't know, right here from Waterloo. He's got a great future. Brandon Montour was recognized as the USHL Player of the Year and the Defenseman of the Year. So we have a lot to be very proud of in the uh, Waterloo Blackhawks and all that they've accomplished this year and the entertainment that they provide us every single year in, in Waterloo. So uh, congratulations to the Blackhawks, to PK, and to the whole team. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Hart. I move that we receive, place on file, and approve the consent agenda items 1A through B8. Also with the approval of the consent agenda, I move that we make our bills payment, which will be read by our finance chair. The bills this week are $14,862,674.66, 
Second. Second. Very good. Uh, there's a motion and a second to approve the count, uh, consent agenda. Council, do you have any questions or comments regarding any of the items on it? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Can Lynn. we consider 1A6 okay. separately? We can. Yes, sir. Uh, we will vote on the consent agenda. We will move 1A6 to the regular agenda and have discussion on that following, immediately following. So voting on everything but 1A6 uh, is a roll call vote. Madam Clerk, please. Ms. Cole. Yes, Mr. Schmidt. I would vote yes on everything except I need to abstain on a payment of $106.52 to Schmidt Telecom for work on behalf of the city. Mr. Lynn? Except for 1B3, I vote yes. <coughs> Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Walker? Yes. Mr. Hurt? Yes. Very good. The motion carries. Uh, Let's take uh, item 1A6 now, please, if somebody would uh, make a motion for that, please. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Schmidt. I make a uh, motion to approve a request to cancel sidewalk weed and snow removal assessments for the African American History and Cultural Museum located at 1320 East 4th Street in the amount of $4,000. $14.82 and authorize city clerk to notify Blackout County Treasurer of said cancellation. Okay, let me make sure that I understand what we just, the motion that was just made, Mr. Schmidt. Um, the, 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 it, was it, was, it was a request to, uh, to, to cancel them, so you don't want to cancel them. You want them to have to pay it. No, it was a motion. No, no, it was a request. motion to a reprove, approve the request to cancel. Okay. So it would oh, I'm sorry. Okay. I'm, I'm, uh, motion to approve the request. I got you. I'm right. sorry. Yep. Okay. Uh, so there is a motion and a second to uh, approve the request as made. Uh, comments? Mr. Mayor, is there anybody here from the African American Museum? Is there anyone here from the African American Museum today? Doesn't appear so, Mr. Morrison. Uh, 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 Ms. Shears, um, have we ever, has there been a history of this type of cancellation? No, not in the history since I've been here. We have not canceled based on inability to pay. Mr. Mayor, do you? Uh, Mr. Morrissey, we have made some allotments in the past for certain individual homeowners for certain occasions. I don't know that we've ever uh, canceled one just for a, uh, the ability to not pay. So I, this would be. There was an error with billing over that. Yeah, sort of yeah. Th this would be a precedent, I, I believe, uh, as far as I know. <coughs> yeah, I, I think reading the communication on this item, I think we all had a chance to glance through it, um, and then taking a look at the newspaper articles over about the past two months, um, the there has been a huge leadership change. Um, within the organization, so they're basically starting from ground zero to try to put something together um, as an organization and to move forward um, with that vision. So uh, I'm assuming this would be something that would help put them on the, um, the, the uh, a path uh, towards their vision of uh, building a museum. But it's been rocky, as you've seen in the newspapers and probably heard. So um, this is new leadership and a new opportunity to move forward. Further comments, Mr. Morrison? Well, my concern is, is uh, setting a precedent, and I mean, if this is outstanding, is there no way for the, the group to be able to uh, make extended payments over time and have some partial forgiveness so there's at least some uh, repayment to something that the ordinary taxpayer would not get this kind of break? That's my concern, mm -hmm. Mr. Mayor. And those are uh, uh, all um, conditions that the council could set on any 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 action we take on this path. The request was to forgive what they owed, and that's the request that we brought to you. Well, that's that's what I would like to see, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Some conditions put on this. Okay, Mr. Lynn. Mr. Mayor, they uh, they also don't split out what's weed and snow removal and sidewalk. Sidewalk, it's a asset. I mean, why would we cancel some sidewalk we put in? I mean, the assessment for the sidewalk. That's the precedent. It, it was sidewalk repair is what sidewalk yeah. would be. Yeah. 
and then everybody has to do yeah, it. Yeah, the weed you know, and snow removal would have been when we hired somebody to. And I can see that gets out of control sometimes, but I, I went pat. If, if you do it for them, then how about the Boys and Girls Club or me? I don't know. Okay. I, Are there further comments uh, on this? How much was the sidewalk assessment? Now they're not broken um, down. I don't have the exact numbers, but it was the majority of it. So, if I could, uh, Councilman Lynn, what I understand your question to be is they made an improvement to the facility now that would be paid for rather than just snow removal and, and uh, weed cutting, correct? But I mean, yeah. if they, if they Susie put said in new the concrete. The majority bills for a new sidewalk or right. to repair the sidewalk. Right. Well, that's. As we're part of our sidewalk repair yeah, we're program. We're doing right. sidewalk assessments right now, and I yeah. guarantee if we say yes here, there'll be a line of people <coughs> saying, how about my side? Good point. I can't pay. Could I make this suggestion? Uh, if, if council might be happy with um, some kind of a payment arrangement, can we table this for a week and uh, we'll contact them and see if that would be amenable to the group? Can I make a motion to table for one week? Second. Very good. There's a motion to table for one week, and uh, we will, uh, somebody will contact them and see if we can work out a payment plan, and we'll get back to council with that. All in favor of tabling for one week, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Very good. That is tabled. Item number two, please. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Hart. I move to receive and file proof of publication notice of public hearing for the FYE 2014 budget amendment. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries and the hearing is now open. Madam Clerk, did we have any objections on file to the budget amendment? There were none. Are there, is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak either for or against the 2014 budget amendment? A second time. Mr. Mayor, I move to close the hearing. Second. Very good, Council. Do you have any questions or comments regarding this item? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The motion carries. Mr. Mayor, I move to adopt a resolution to approve said budget amendment. Second. Madam Clerk. Mr. Schmidt. Yes. Mr. Lynn. Yes. Mr. Morrissey. Yes. Mr. Walpert. Yes. Mr. Hart. Yes. Ms. Cole. Yes. Very good. That motion carries. Item number three, please. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Schmidt. Item number three, I'd like to make a motion to receive and file proof of publication and notice of public hearing. And that's for the rezone request from the City of Waterloo, Iowa to rezone 3.24 acres from M1 Light Industrial District to CP Plan Commercial District, located at the intersection of West Jefferson Street and U.S. Highway 63, formerly known as the Grand Hotel site. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And that hearing is now open. Madam Clerk, are there any written objections on file to item number three? There are none. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak either for or against? rezoning the old Grand Hotel site. A second time. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion to close the hearing. Second. Council, do you have any questions or comments? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion to receive, file, consider, and pass for the first time an ordinance amending ordinance number 5079 as amended, City of Waterloo zoning ordinance by amending the official zoning map referred to in section 10-4-4, approving a rezone on certain property. Second. Madam Clerk, that's a roll call vote, please. Mr. Lind? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Welker? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Motion carries. Mr. Mayor, make a motion to suspend the rules. Second. Madam Clerk, please. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lynn? Yes. Very good. That motion carries. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion to consider and pass for the second, third times and adopt the ordinance. Second. Madam Clerk, please. It's a roll call vote. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lynn? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Very good. That motion carries. Thank you, Council. Item number three passes. Item number four. Mr. Mayor? Mr. Welper? Number four is a motion to receive and file proof of publication of a notice of a public hearing. That's to rezone the request from roof development of Waterloo, Iowa, to rezone approximately 0.413 acres from C2 Commercial to C3 Commercial District to allow for the construction of eight brownstone-style condominiums at the corner of East 3rd and Lafayette Street. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That motion carries, and that hearing is now open. Madam Clerk, do we have any written objections on file to item number four? There were none. 
Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak either for or against rezoning the uh, property at 3rd and Lafayette? A second time. Mr. Mayor, make a motion to close the hearing. Second. Council, do you have any questions or comments? Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Schmidt. I would just like to state for the record again, um, I'm very supportive of all the economic developments going on in downtown Waterloo. I'm very supportive of all the work that uh, John Roof is doing with his various housing developments. I still think this is the wrong location for this uh, development, and that's why I'm going to vote against it. Okay, very good. Uh, comments are noted. Uh, Madam Clerk, any further comments? Madam Clerk, to roll call vote, please. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? No. Mr. Lind? No. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Wilber? Yes. Very good. That motion carries. Before the next motion is, is made, uh, Council, to suspend the rules, I, I have asked a couple of you individually, but I would ask that uh, I think this project will go forward, and, and we've had lots of comment Should about it. Need, yeah. need a motion first? We need a two thirds vote. Why? Majority of council for an Help me. We, the two -thirds of planning. Uh, we, we had a majority. We didn't have a two-thirds for the vote for, to pass the ordinance. Yeah. Yeah. We need a majority. Yeah. Have to have. Yep. Well, you either have to wait. Come to the microphone, yeah. Jim, so anybody can hear you that's talking, please. Since this is a rezoning, you have to have a supermajority to pass it. Oh, there was no opposition? If without opposition, then you don't need a supermajority. Sorry. I thought we were <coughs> still on that. They were objecting, but nobody filed objections at this time to the rezoning? No. On an ordinance, though, don't we need a two-thirds vote? I'm assured by our city planner that that's not the case. Is it over it because it's rezoning? Okay. <coughs> <laughs> It always helps. I get a little <laughs> heads up. Believe it or not, I don't know all the law. Every what? Second. And, 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 and I'm assuming when it comes to zoning that Mr. Anderson probably does. He's an expert. So we're going to move forward that we don't need a, a two-thirds majority to pass a zoning, a rezone. Should and he be wrong, which I doubt would ever be the case, but should he be wrong, uh, all we are is it hasn't rezoned yet. And we'll yeah. have to come back to you again. Okay. Very good. But he's never wrong. Yeah, I haven't known him to be. <laughs> uh, we've never said that we wouldn't at times be entertaining, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, we're going to go back and recap. The, 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 the motion uh, to rezone did pass. We're at the motion to suspend the rules, and I would just like to ask council to consider passing that, uh, denying that. Again, this, this project is going to go forward. Uh, uh, with no further objection, I don't believe, and we would like to get this project started. So, uh, I'm waiting for a motion. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Welker. I'd like to make a motion to receive, file, consider, and pass for the first time an ordinance amending the ordinance number 5079. I think we, we've, we've done that. We're just on the motion to suspend the rules, Ron. Sorry. I have not read that, sir. I don't know. Did you? No, no. no. I don't think then so. I missed it because I just had a roll call. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, I thought we were check the tape, Alice. Alice. <laughs> Okay. Start again. Good thing this isn't yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, Mr. Welper, you know where you are. Would yes. you please read the next motion? All right. I'll, I'll read this one over again. Okay. <laughs> this is the motion to receive, file, consider, and pass for the first time an ordinance amending the ordinance number 5079 as amended, City of Waterloo Zoning Ordinance, by amending the official zoning map referred to in the section 10-4-4, <laughs> approving a rezone on certain property. Second. Whew. Thank you, sir. This is a roll call vote. Madam Clerk, please. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? No. Mr. Lind? No. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Very good. Thank you very much, Mr. Welper, and all involved. Uh, Next, make a please. Motion to suspend the rules. Second. <coughs> Ms. Uh, Madam Clerk, please. Mr. Schmidt? No. Mr. Lind? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Okay. Yes. We'll take it up next week. Uh, item number five, please. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Hart. Move to receive and file proof of publication of notice of public hearing for the development agreement between the City of Waterloo and Eagles Wings 2 LLC for the construction of a 10,000 square foot industrial building east of 2366 Newell Street and authorize the selling conveyance of lot 4 of the North 
East Industrial Park Flat Number One at a cost of a dollar. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The motion carries, and that hearing is now open. Madam Clerk, are there any written objections on file to item number five? Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak for or against item number five? A second time. Mr. Mayor, move to close the hearing. Second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. I'm sorry, Council, do you have any comments or questions regarding this? Mr. Mayor, I have a question for you. Okay, uh, Mr. Lynn, please. What would the value of that asset be? About? No, I'm some community planning development director. You're asking what the value of the building is going to be? No, the, the oh, of the of the land itself. Yes. Yeah. Um, generally, we value it out there. I think our last appraisal was about fifty-five thousand per acre. Um, so this is probably, a, I, if I remember right, it's about a one and a half acre site. If I remember offhand. Um, and of course, they're building a new. Uh, I think it was a three hundred fifty-two thousand <coughs> dollar um, new industrial building out there. Obviously, bringing new employment out to the area, new construction, um, and we have several other lots out there, smaller industrial lots that we'd like to get filled as well. And so this is a good uh, precedent to get out there for more industrial buildings. And the theory is they now will start paying taxes. Are they getting any kind of tax abatement on top of the land? Not for this one. The policy says that they would get free land for any building under a million dollars in new taxable value. If it was over one million in new taxable <coughs> value, they get free land in five years at fifty percent. Um, so at three hundred fifty-two thousand, they're just getting the free land. Good. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, Council. I did ask for a vote. There was a vote of, of a uh, ayes. Uh, all those opposed, same sign. That motion carries. Mr. Mayor, I move to adopt a resolution authorizing said sale and conveyance and authorize city attorney to prepare and deliver deed accordingly. Second. Madam Clerk, that's a roll call vote, please. Mr. Lind? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Wilbur? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. The motion carries. Mr. Mayor, I move to adopt a resolution approving said development agreement and authorize mayor and city clerk to execute said document. Second. Madam Clerk, that's also a roll call vote, please. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Welford? Yes. Mr. Hurt? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lynn? Yes. Very good. The motion carries. Item number six, please. Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Smith. Item number six, I'd like to make a motion to receive and file proof of publication or notice of public hearing, and that's for the request by Candio Church of Waterloo for a site plan amendment to the BP Business Park District to allow for the establishment of a new church facility and for the construction of a new parking lot for the church facility located at 3211 Titan Trail. Second. Very good. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed. Same sign. Motion carries, and that hearing is now open. Madam Clerk, were there any written objections to this item on file? Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak either for or against uh, item number six, the Candeo Church project? Second time. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion to close the hearing and receive and file the recommendation of approval of planning, programming, and zoning commission. Second. Very good. Council, do you have any comments or questions regarding this item? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The motion carries. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion to receive, file, consider, and pass for the first time an ordinance amending ordinance number 5079 as amended. City of Waterloo zoning ordinance by amending the official zoning map referred to in section 10-4-4 approving a site plan amendment on certain property. Second. Very good. It's a roll call vote. Madam Clerk, please. <coughs> Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lind? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Very good. The motion carries. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion to suspend the rules. Second. Uh, and that's a roll call vote, please. Mr. Hart? <coughs> yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lind? No. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Welper? Yes. Very good. Uh, if it fails, we'll take that up next week. Item 7, please. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Morrissey. Could I just ask a question about yeah. what a supermajority means? Supermajority means you have to have six of the seven council people's vote. If there's one councilman absent, then you can't have a supermajority. I see. Unless. Thank you. Or five. Five of the seven. Five. It's five of the it would be six when <laughs> 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 different super majorities. Yeah, well. right. Let me get back to you on that one. There's, there's two different kinds. There's one that is of the whole council, even if they're not here. And that's the one I was talking about where you need five. And then there's no kind of six. Okay. 
We'll get back to you. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Item number seven, please. Mr. Mayor. Ms. Cole. I move to receive and file proof of publication of notice of public hearing on a request by Corstang Enterprises LLC of Waterloo for a site plan amendment to the new to the BP Business Park District to allow for the construction of a new 10,800 square foot commercial building located at the northeast corner of Cyclone Drive and Titan Trail. Second. Very good. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. The hearing is now open. Madam Clerk, were there any written objections on file to this? There item? were none. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak either for or against the project? This is the Kraft Cochran project building a new building uh, <coughs> near their present location. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak either for or against it? Second time. I move that we close the hearing and receive and file recommendation of approval of planning programming <coughs> and zoning commission. Second. Council, do you have any comments? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The motion carries. I move that we receive, file, consider, and pass for the first time an ordinance amending ordinance number 5079 as amended, City of Waterloo Zoning Ordinance by amending the official zoning map referred to in section 10-4-4, approving a site plan amendment on certain properties. Second. Madam Clerk, please. Ms. Cole? Yes. <coughs> yes. Mr. Lind? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Wilper? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Very good. That motion carries. I move that we suspend the rules. Second. Okay. Madam Clerk? Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lind? No. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Wilper? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? I get yes. the motion fails. We'll take that up next week. Also, let's do resolutions. Let's do three at a time, please. Eight, nine, and ten. Mr. Mr. Mayor. Mayor. Mr. Hart. I move that we adopt a resolution approving revised 28E agreement with Metropolitan Transit Authority, City of Waterloo, and the City of Cedar Falls to provide a public transit service and authorize Mayor and City Clerk to execute said documents. And nine, I move to adopt a resolution approving donation of K9 Spike to a Zandler. Officer Al Bovey and 10, I move to adopt a resolution approving memorandum of understanding with Iowa Northland Regional Council of Governments, Intercog, in the amount not to exceed $2,000 for writing preparation and submittal for extension of Highway 63 recreational trail application for state recreational trail funds and authorize Mayor and City Clerk to execute said document. Second. Council, do you have any questions or comments regarding 8, 9, or 10? Madam Clerk, please. Mr. Lind? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Very good. Those motions carry. Uh, Council, let's do 11 and 12. 13 is also a voice vote. It's a motion. It's not actually a resolution, but if somebody could do 11, 12, and 13, please. Mr. Mayor? Um, Mr. Morrissey, please. I'd like to make a resolution setting date of hearing as June 16, 2014 to approve propo proposed repairs in conjunction with the sidewalk inspection and repair program zone 4 and approve request to send out notification to property owners of proposed sidewalk repairs and estimate of costs number 12 resolution approving request to piggyback from current open bid for four uh, 2014 pickup trucks for the sewer department from Bill Colwell Ford, Hudson Iowa, in the amount of $93,404. And number 13, a motion approving extra work order number one for a net increase of $54,440 for work performed by Todd Van Doren Construction of Cedar Falls, Iowa, in conjunction with the fiscal year 2014 sidewalk repair program zone four and trail repairs contract number 863 and authorize Mayor and City Clerk to execute said documents. Second. Thank you, Mr. Morrissey. Council, do you have any questions regarding 11, 12, or 13? Let's do a roll call on all three, please, Madam Clerk. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Wilber? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lamb? Yes. Good. The motion carries. Item 14, please. Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. A Mr. Move Hart? Move to instruct Public Works Director to prepare plan specifications, form of contract, et cetera, for the Public Works Salt Storage Facility. Second. All in favor? I'm sorry. Qu Council, do you have any questions or comments? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Mr. That motion carries. Mr. Mayor, I move to receive and file plan specifications form of contract. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. 
Motion carries. Mr. Mayor, I move to adopt a resolution preliminarily approving plan specifications form of contract. Second. Madam Clerk, it's a roll call vote. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lund? Yes. Mr. Morris? Yes. <coughs> Good. The motion carries. Mr. Mayor, I move to adopt a resolution setting date of, date of bid opening as <coughs> June 12, 2014 and public hearing as June 16, 2014. Instruct City Clerk to publish notice of plan specifications form of contract. Second. Madam Clerk, please. That's a roll call vote. Mr. Hurt? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lind? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Welcome? Yes. Very good. The motion carries. Thank you, Council. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the end of our regularly scheduled business for tonight. Uh, it is time for oral presentations. If there's anyone in the audience that would like to speak to the mayor or council, uh, it's time to do so. Please come to the microphone. Give us your name and address, and please limit your comments to three minutes. Jim Chapman, 224 <coughs> Birch. Uh, I'm a little confused about this number one uh, concern about public safety being the fire department and police department. It seems like we can find money wherever else we want to buy a parking lot, a house on Jefferson that we paid more than assessed value, paid way too much for a credit union. You know, it just seems to me that uh, we ought to be putting our priorities into the number one concern, which is the fire department and police department. And also, in that meantime, we started another whole department called animal control. I mean, you know, I mean, that is a concern to me. That is public safety. I understand that. But... You know, it just seems like we can find money for other things. Why can't we put that money to good use and put it towards the fire department, police department? Thanks, Jim. David Dreyer, 3145 West 4th Street. Um, I hope these comments, if they get out on the public network like they are being recorded, don't cause them not to come to my house when the fire or ambulance is needed. But I live on 4th and Ainsboro, and when I first moved to town, the uh, fire station somewhere around that time period on Ridgeway and, and uh, Ainsboro was closed down for a, a period of time. I did not notice anything different on the amount of ambulances or fire trucks going by my place any more than I do now when it's open. Uh, they, they keep talking about they need more police, they need, need more fire fighters, etc. I don't disagree with they might be understaffed, but they seem to have been able to uh, handle the situation during that period of time. And uh, I think it's a little bit of, uh, we're getting some cry wolf. Thanks, David. Okay, Meyer 526 Home Park Boulevard. I'm looking at this document that you put out on April 28th. It was, it was a city council meeting and the document <coughs> was prepared on April 23rd. And on the front page of this document, it says, paragraph D, GPC states in part, not to exceed $700,000 in general obligation funds for general corporate purposes, inspections, department, including animal control. Then in the back here, it also in that GP, GCP, not to exceed 700,000 on general obligations bond for general purposes, general corporate purposes, bearing interest at the rate of not to exceed 9% per annum. The bond will be issued for the purpose of providing funds to pay costs and acquisitions of vehicles for various city departments, including public works, building inspection, leisure and building maintenance, equipment, various city departments, including animal control, public works, city clerk, and finance, building and infrastructure improvements and public works. My whole point is here, when I look at that, and we're laying off police and firemen, and you're borrowing money at the tune of $700,000 to spend it in this category, including animal control, I have a real problem with that. The most important people we got, and every year when, when it's a budget crunch, it's our police and firemen. And you know, we give lip service to the fact that we really appreciate our, appreciate our fire and policemen, but when it comes to money, we back away from them. We don't cover their back then. Well, I think you ought to really reevaluate what you're doing here and quit creating a whole new department that's gonna take vehicles, equipment, personnel, 
everything else, but we're going to throw the police and firemen under the bus. I have a real problem with that, and I think you need to step back here and reevaluate what you're doing, and let's, let's try to take care of what should come first, and police and firemen should come way before animal control. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. Jim Walsh up here this time as JSA. And, and you know what you're talking about this JSA time. JSA development, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I'm here to tell everybody about a special <coughs> event we're going to have downtown. Uh, it'll happen June 7th and 8th. We're going to do a recreation and a theater performance uh, regarding an event that happened 80 years ago in our downtown when the uh, uh, Waterloo Police Department uh, were able to cap capture, apprehend, uh, a uh, member of the Dillinger gang, uh, Tommy Carroll was his name. We're doing a uh, event that'll start at 5 o'clock, doors will open at 5, performance will start at 7 uh, at the Brown Derby. We're going to do a uh, little bit of history on what it was like downtown in 1934, a little bit about what it was like with Prohibition and uh, full swing nearing its end, uh, a little bit about the Great Depression and its effect on the people in Waterloo. And then we're going to go down the street and recreate the uh, capture of uh, Mr. Tommy Carroll, including performers from the Black Hawk Community Theater and uh, some theatrical guns and a lot of noise. And uh, as near as we can, we'll recreate the scene. So anybody who could come, it's $10 for admission. Uh, the uh, tickets are available at Black Hawk Community Theater or at the door. Uh, and it, again, it's uh, Saturday the 7th and Sunday the 8th. Uh, and it's at the Brown Derby on Sycamore Street. So, Jim, those are two performances, the same performance on Saturday same and thing again on be Sunday. Same created on Sunday. Okay. Uh, and uh, anybody who's got questions can call the theater or call me. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <coughs> For Stillaboo, 1725 Huntington Road. Again, very disappointed at the work session. Department heads were allowed to basically attack council people. I think that's wrong. I've never seen it in all the years I've attended council meetings. I've never seen that type of <coughs> outward attacks. And you, Mayor, sitting there, mm -hmm. not doing anything about it. If I started to attack anybody up there, you would definitely stop me. You allowed a department head to go on and on and on. That's wrong. And it should have been stopped. Now, police and fire, they're important. I think, I truly believe politics is being played. Absolutely, positively believe it. You don't have enough money for police and fire and not continue to tax us people. Some of the council people saw that we are overtaxed and we have to cut the budget. And they did that. For the citizens of Waterloo, that's who all of you are supposed to, excuse me, that's who all of you are supposed to be working for is the citizens of Waterloo. Not the police department, not the fire department, not the city employees, not the downtown business people. You continue to ignore the citizens of Waterloo. You, you sit there, you talk about police and fire, more money, more time off. One of the gentlemen spoke at the budget meetings. He thought he could handle it without browning things out. Yeah, go ahead and put me on. No, I just wanted to make sure that you didn't get beeped there for us. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, and uh, he suggested that he would be hard to replace and maybe you could give him more money and if you couldn't give him more time, give him more money, give him more time off. I was there when that was stated. And I was there when I, I what I heard was we weren't going to close fire stations, but now we are. You people have created TIF districts downtown. You've created TIF districts everywhere. And I told you before, TIF, new construction in TIF areas don't pay taxes, they don't help pay for police, they don't help pay for fire. So when they get a call, let's bill them the full load. Do just like you're going to do the landlords. You bill them the full load at $100 per person, per hour, or however it is you're planning on billing us. You bill those people that have a TIF building that aren't paying taxes to support. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Forrest. <laughs> Mr. Heading? I can't be outdone by Mr. Walsh or the Blackhawks. Wonderful presentation on the Blackhawks, but let's not <coughs> forget that tomorrow night, the Waterloo Bucks open their season. So 
Baseball officially is underway tomorrow night. 6.35 at Riverfront Stadium. That's my plug. Thanks, Paul. Thank you. Uh, Greg Tagtel, uh, 111 Kelly Court, Waterloo. I'm uh, here representing uh, the 250 uh, Facebook supporters of uh, former employee Mike Guile. And there are just a few statements I wanted to read for the record. <coughs> um, from Ward Lang, uh, best city asset ever was his response to supporting Mike. Uh, from Justin Scott, he, uh, we worked with Mike directly in planning and coordinating their wedding back in 2009. Not only was he helpful, but he went above and beyond his professional responsibilities to make sure that everything went perfect. <coughs> From Katrina Sandvik, uh, I worked with in the Center for the Arts for uh, more than 10 years on the WCP staff. Uh, Mike was more than just the guy that changed the light bulbs and the toilet paper when we needed it. <coughs> Uh, he was always very proactive in helping the theater deal with unforeseen uh, occurrences and made things run smooth. Uh, Jennifer Cherist, during my teenage years I worked as a night and weekend receptionist for the Center for the Arts. Loved the job primarily because she got to work with Mike. On special nights he would treat us with Chinese food, relieved us when he needed a break, and always walked us to our cars when it was dark outside. He worked hard to make sure all the rooms were set on time and the center ran smoothly. Um, from Lise March, I was shocked when I heard this. Uh, Mike is the Waterloo Center for the Arts. She has worked with Mike uh, for more than 18 years. She was a uh, musical director for seven shows at the WCP. And in that time, uh, they also rented rooms for Mike for dozens of recitals. Uh, she was always treated well. Mike always delivered above and beyond, both professionally and was just simply a nice person to work with. Uh, there are a couple more statements here, plus uh, 40 names of the 250 supporters we have, and I wanted to present those to the council. Absolutely, Greg, and we will put those on file. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you for your time. You bet. <coughs> Randy Herrick, 111 Highland. Uh, I'm just looking for a little clarification. I had thought in the past that uh, the Waterloo City website, where it has the all the committees and commissions <coughs> listed there with all the people, was to be updated. Uh, I had reason to go and look at it today, and it's not. I'm still listed on there, going back to 2002. Um, I just is there a problem with updating it or what? So. Just <coughs> sure D about this. Okay, sure, Councilman Hart. Um, we're actually we're in the process of taking a look at revising the entire site. Um, first, it has to go to our boards and commission meeting, which we've been waiting to have. And after that, um, we've already been in contact with Susie, with whoever our web person is, to upgrade everything and make it more real time for you. So I just we, we appreciate that. Come in can, and type it. Can for people you. still contact? Can people still contact you about that board? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> we do have a list out there, though, and maybe that's what he's talking about. I thought we had a current list, but I wonder. If it's uh, well, it's Randy, well, thanks for bringing it to our attention. We'll check on it tomorrow. Motion to receive and file oral comments and Lee, I mean, adjourn. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. We're adjourned. Thank you.